Good afternoon, and it's great to welcome you to our Nexus webinar. This afternoon, we're going to be looking at how digital technology makes Highland Health Services much more accessible. My name is Jaya Calder, and I'm going to be running your webinar this afternoon. Now, the majority of people that have joined the Nexus webinar series do know how to use GoTo as an attendee, but if this is your first time, I'll just take 30 seconds to let you know how we can actually get you involved. You've come in as an attendee, which means that you're automatically muted and we can't see you, but you'll be able to see the presenters, see the slides, and you'll also have a question box that we really encourage you to pop in your questions throughout the whole of the session. It makes for a much better webinar. It could be a comment or even an observation, but please use that question box. And you'll also see a icon that looks like a raised hand. Now, when we come to a CUNY later on in the session, we'd love to take you off mute and speak directly with our speakers this afternoon. And the last thing to advise is we're recording this afternoon's session. So let's make a start and I'll pass you over to my colleague, Andrea, to start our webinar. Andrea. Thanks, Jaya. Uh, thanks for doing the introductions today. Yeah, welcome everybody to our uh, Nexus webinar. I'm Andrea McCall. I work for Highlands and Islands Enterprise in the Life Sciences team and I'm based in Inverness. So just to explain a little bit at the start, uh, the Nexus webinar series is an opportunity to find out what's going on really in life sciences, health and care and technology and to make connections. And Nexus is a co-working space that is available on Inverness campus and it's a space where life sciences and technology companies co-locate and collaborate. And the space is actually funded by the Inverness City Region Deal and European funding, the ERDF fund. So actually want to not kind of hold you up with any other details. I want to go straight into introductions to our speakers. So I'm delighted today to be joined by Dawn and Karen. And they will talk about the dig digital technology developments that have made healthcare more accessible in NHS Highland and actually beyond NHS Highland as well. So Dawn is, uh, as you can see here, project manager at NHS National Services Scotland. So the national team that looks after um, NHS near me. And Karen is a project mid midwife at NHS Highland. So we are going straight into um, Dawn's presentation first and then handing over to Karen afterwards before we're going into the question and answer. So just going straight to Dawn's slides. Hi everyone. So as Andrea was saying, I'm Dawn Robb and I'm project manager for the Near Me programme. So today I just want to give a brief introduction on what Near Me actually is. Near Me's responses to COVID as well and this, the approach we took to support some of the services. And just to highlight some of the key benefits of implementing and using Near Me. So just to give you some background, it was officially launched by the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport in December in 2016. And the first patient was actually seen in February 2017. So it's a customised built platform designed with a clinic workflow in mind, which differs from other video consultant platforms. So the user can be sent a text or email and that brings them directly into a waiting area. Or you can actually have, you can see there, a wee start video call button on your service website. And then the patient or user will wait in their own private waiting area until a clinician joins them. And just to make you aware, the patient or user cannot see anyone else within the queue waiting to be seen. So just to run through some of the key components of Near Me. Now, it is easy to use for both user and clinician or professional. There's no need to install any additional hardware or software. It simply works via a web browser. So we do have security documentation that we have completed, which I'll come to later on in my slides. And it works on a wide range of devices. So your iPad, iPhone, smartphone devices, laptops, tablets, etc. It will also work on lowest bandwidth as well and will work across 4G network too. So I just wanted to show you what you actually see within Near Me when you pick up your patient or service user. You will see you as a professional in a small corner and your patient in the bigger screen. Now you've got some functions at the bottom there. You've got a chat box, which is particularly useful if you wanted to send a link to a website 
or if the person you were seeing had difficulties or hard of hearing or anything like that, you can use that. You can mute your mic, you can disable your camera, you can also share your screen if you wanted to share any results or any information on a particular website, you can do that. If your service model is set up, you can actually transfer the patient into another waiting area if that is the way your service has been set up. And also there's an invite button that you can bring in any family members or an interpreter. If they wanted to be within this video consultation, they can directly come straight in. So just to give you some figures, in March this year, we had about 366 consultations per week. However, since COVID, we've had about 18,000 consultations per week. And looking at the data as well, it's actually increased to just below 19,000. So I just wanted to share with you just a breadth of specialities used in Near Me. I'm not going to go into each of these, but just to give you an idea of all the Near Me waiting areas set up. So after each near me consultation, the patient or user is invited to complete anonymous survey. Now, 97.8 uh, said they would actually use it again, which was very encouraging for the team and for the users who have actually been using it. In terms of how we scaled up and the approach we took, especially in response to COVID, there's a three-step model and it covers three areas of how to get best use of implementing Near Me within your service. So there's the technical side, having equipment, access and the IT. There's the service processes, which is actually embedding Near Me within your service process and then individual training as well. So I'll just briefly go through each of these steps. So technical setup, so it's having a webcam, headset or speakers. You can access Near Me via Google Chrome, Apple Safari or Microsoft Edge. And also just checking that your connection works, make sure there's no firewalls or anything like that. So as I was mentioning earlier, I was talking about some of the insurance documents that we have completed. So nationally, we've done a system security policy, a data protection impact assessment, a quality and diversity impact assessment. We also ran a public and professional engagement exercise, and there's various resources on clinical safety as well. And I'll share some of those links at the end of this presentation. We've also got technical support from the national video conferencing team that operate Monday to Friday from eight to six, and obviously out of hours for major incidents as well. So the processes, this is the difficult part of embedding Near Me because it's looking at your current process and actually where Near Me can be embedded within that process. So the NHS loves a patient pathway. So looking at this, you're trying to process map each step from start to finish. So how does the patient access the Near Me waiting area? How are they picked up? Are they seen by reception and then put into a waiting area? How do you record that the appointment is actually taking place via Near Me and any referral and a contingency plan as well? So if anything goes wrong, are you going to phone them? Where would you get that phone number? So it's thinking about absolutely everything from start to finish within that. So this is just an example of a patient pathway I thought I'd share with you. So training, the other area that we focus on. So we've actually got, as I was saying, the National Video Conferencing team, they offer drop-in training sessions. We've got a wide range of videos, which are absolutely fantastic, and they are not long at all. So please feel free to visit those. We've also got guidance notes as well. NES produced some training resources that are actually available on the tourist platform as well. So please feel free to have a look at those. We've also got a patient and citizen facing website. So it's www.nearme.scot and it's just got information about what actually is near me, what do I need and some frequently asked questions. But what they can actually do within that is test a call so they can go into our demo waiting area. It is a demo and make that very clear, but it just makes them feel a bit more comfortable just testing their equipment and just making sure they get in okay. So I just wanted to go over just some of the benefits of using Near Me. So it enables physical distancing, especially with an environment we're in now. You can actually see the person. So if you need to do a risk assessment or even added reassurance, you can do that via seeing that person. Also as well, it's person-centered care. They can access Near Me wherever suitable and appropriate, if that's from work or from home. 
you know, it can actually reduce stress as well if they're needing to travel, find a car park space, etc. Or if they are actually a carer for someone within the house, they don't need to leave the house and leave that person alone. And also it reduces travel. There's no need to travel to an appointment. As I was saying, you can do that from wherever is suitable for that person. And I just wanted to share just my contact details. If there's any questions or anything at all I can help with, the National Video Conferencing team that has got a range of videos there. And also, if you are thinking of applying for a waiting area on near me, it's got all the forms on there. The near me website, which I was saying is the patient and citizen facing website. The technology enabled care website that has a lot of the guidance documents I was talking about uh, earlier on and also a public and clinicians consultation exercise. That's a link to that one as well. And that is all from me. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Don. That was um, that was great. So we're going straight over to Karen. OK, thank you, Angela. My name is Karen McKillop. I'm the Vaginet Project Midwife for NHS Highland North. And today I just want to talk to you a little bit about the maternity app that uh, works alongside the Vaginet maternity system. During the discussion, I will actually refer to the clinical system as Vaginet and the app as the maternity notes, just so that we don't get too confused. So, a little bit of background here. In Scotland, we have 14 health boards and 13 of these are live with Vaginet maternity. So we're very, very nearly a national electronic maternity record. Now, NHS Highland, as we know, is the largest health board geographically, and that in itself creates just a few problems with the remote and rural location for some of our patients. Now, within the Vaginet maternity system, we have divided it into four care locations. The largest, of course, is the Rigmore care location, and that because that involves the acute general hospital and nine community stroke maternity teams. We also have three CMUs, one based at Cape Ness, one in Skye and one in Invergordon. CMUs are community midwifery units or stroke standalone units. Um, there's not really any obstetric cover there, but all antenatal care and uh, option for delivery can be discussed here. And in Nova Gordon, we have what we call a community midwifery day assessment unit that works part time. So approximately we have about 2000 deliveries a year, and that includes all the CMU, home birth, hospital and the occasional lay by unpanned delivery. So what is Baginet? So Baginet is a, designed as a full end-to-end -end maternity system. It allows real-time recording of all events wherever they occur in the hospital, community, at home, right from that first contact that we have until they are discharged on day 10. And this pathway includes both high and low risk pregnancies based on woman-centered care models. It comes along with a portal for women to view and access their own maternity records online. You have an iPad view and a desktop view, if you wish. And Baginet is able to record all aspects of care within the unit. And I say in real time, this is really, really important for us. So if somebody in Caveness has sent somebody down to Aidmore for review or assessment, then that community midwife in Caveness can see in real time what is happening to her patient in Aidmore. Now, the other benefit to Baginet maternity is the single pregnancy record access that they have. As a single hosted solution, it allows all records, any unit that is using Baginet to share that record. So what that means, if somebody in Glasgow has booked and had a care in Glasgow, and moves to the Highlands, it means that we can read and edit that note instantaneously. And that was really important for us during the COVID pandemic because we did have a few ladies that came up here for shielding. And of course, we do have quite a few holiday makers. So really, really useful to us. So that's about Vaginet Maternity. But today, what I really want to do is focus on the app and what the women will see. 
So a little bit of background, what did we have before the app? Well, handheld records have been around for quite a while. And just before the app, we had what we call the Scottish Women's Handheld Maternity Records. So around about 2004, the Scottish Government brought in this swimmer, and there's been several versions since. And it's about a 50 page booklet. And in fact, Scotland was the first UK country to actually have a unified national electronic maternity record. There's three parts. We've got the initial combined pregnancy record, labour and birth record for when they come into hospital. And then we have, once they've delivered, we add the baby record to the mum's record. And then on day 10, when they're discharged, they hand all of these notes back to us. So in the next sort of photo in the top right hand corner, you can see this is typical paperwork given out at a booking appointment. It's not unusual to have around about 25 separate documents given at a booking appointment. And remember that booklet is 50 pages um, deep as well. So during the admission, you can have even more paperwork. So all of this can be replicated within the Baginet system. Part of that is actually into the app. And that's uh, just down there is the icon for the app. It's what we use, maternity notes. So just prior to going live, and that was around about December 19, we put this notice out to GPs and antenatal clinics, hospital waiting areas, just to inform women about what we were going to do. We were going to move to digital handheld notes. It is a fully opt-in process. We do have the facility to provide paper notes and paper documents if somebody doesn't want to opt into the digital notes. They need an iPhone, Android app, so they need a smartphone and they need an email address. So what are the benefits? The best and most uh, obvious benefit is the access to their own digital maternity record on their phone or their device. And as you know, Nobody leaves home without their mobile phone now, but quite often left home without the maternity handheld records on paper. But it's there for everyone to see access to all assigned healthcare leaflets. And as we saw in the previous slide, there are many, many leaflets. So having all of these leaflets and the record on the app is saving us costs in paper as well as the environment. Blood test results are available on the app. And it does mean that a community midwife can publish that blood test result with a little message to say everything's fine or please could you call me. It sets that appointment reminders. Very, very important. We haven't audited this year, but I'm almost positive that our DNA levels have gone right down. So DNA, sorry, I'm talking about uh, did not attend. So women that do not attend for their appointments, they get several reminders on this app that they have an up and coming appointment. So the other thing that we can do is push notifications and SMS texts. I'll go over that a little bit more in detail at the end. Brand new for the last year and during the COVID pandemic was the home blood pressure monitoring, the ability to document your blood pressure at home into the app so that your community midwife or clinician could see this. You also have the option for feedback to upload feedback questionnaires to evaluate our care and also birth plan conversations. So this is what it looks like on the mobile phone. You download the app from Google Play or Apple uh, Store, click on and you see your care plan view. So what I'm going to do just now is change over to the web view and just see it a little bit clearer. And here we have a lovely picture of mother in here. So you can upload your own picture every single week. We don't see the pictures. This is just for, this is what the woman sees when she signs in. It defaults on the left hand side to the current week of gestation. So whatever week, this lady is currently 28 weeks pregnant. It's a bigger circle, it's darker, it's surrounded by icons. And if you just hover over them, you can see what the icons mean. So what's going to happen at that week. On the right hand side, we can see it gives a brief description of what happens in your pregnancy during week 28. 
your up and coming appointments are listed below. And when you make that appointment in the Vaginet clinical system, you can write in reminders. Please remember to take your VP prior to appointment. Can you think of any questions that you might ask? And here we've got the BP. For this particular appointment, I've asked them to document the BP 15 minutes before the appointment. Now, this is a safety feature that's within the Vaginet record at the moment. So you can only input your blood pressure 15 minutes prior to your appointment. And that's because we don't want women document their blood pressure in the morning having an abnormal reading and then not having an appointment in the afternoon and we've lost time to act on that finding. So they have to document 15 minutes before their appointment. Clicking on here, events likely to happen this week. So this relates to the icons around the week 28, telling us what the antenatal assessment is, home visit, some parent education, we would like to discuss the birth plan, so we're just sharing our views between each other here. Now, the other thing we have is support conversations. I have to say in Highland, we are not particularly using antenatal or postnatal support conversations. We're just slightly concerned at the moment that women might document something within these tabs, conversational tabs, that because we don't have a process where we're accessing the record every single day, we might miss something. So we still want women to phone us if they're concerned about anything. But we definitely most use the birth tab. It's really important for us for women to document their birth choices and preferences. So on here, I can continue the conversation that I've had previously. I'll just open up the last one. So if I would like a home birth, what do I think about induction, monitoring my baby, I can add all of that on there and share that with my midwife and that will come through to the clinical record. Now it also has the option that you can enter your personal diary. That diary isn't shared with us, that's the woman's own personal diary. And I would think it was because you get to keep this app or access to this app for at least 25 years this will be lovely to look back on in 10 or 15 years just to see how you felt at that time okay so maternity record is here at the top show my healthcare professionals because i'm actually using a test patient i can't load up anybody else apart from myself at the moment so here i can see my midwife and it's me I can share my notes with my GP. There is this facility within Vaginate to do, but it is a little bit time consuming. Slightly concerned that I think if you only have a 10 minute appointment with your GP, it involves women sharing, giving the GPs an access code. The GP then has to give her the email. So that is a little bit clunky just now. So hasn't been used very much at the moment. But on here, we can see when we were talking about this swimmer before, so this has been replicated within the app and within the system. So we've got the swimmer, antenatal, all the antenatal visits. We don't have we don't have pictures, but we do have events that they've attended for the scan. And of course, we've got our welcome message here. Welcome to your maternity record, phone numbers for help and advice and the foreign symptoms that we would definitely want to know about. Okay, this is where we could leave the feedback. If we had, we haven't uploaded any just yet, but it's definitely part of our Highland Quality Assurance to evaluate the care that we give. So we're definitely going to look at this very soon. But my favorite feature, I think, is the leaflets and resources. On here. So, on here are all the leaflets and resources that we offer women. Now, if we particularly want somebody to read a document, we can list it into recommended feature box on their care plan so that it highlights to them, this leaflet has been assigned to you and we want you to read. What it does is it takes you straight, when you click on it, it takes you straight through out of the actual uh, web browser onto here. 
so we can see it, vitamin D and U, okay, as an example. Now, the woman has actually read the record. I'm going to show you the test patient that we have just now. A great uh, facility for us. I can see here the leaflets that she has read and not read. This enables us to actually focus down on the leaflets that we want the woman to leave instead of wondering if she's read all of them or some of them. So it gives me the date and time that she's actually read the leaflet. Any leaflet I particularly wanted to read, I can then bring up at the next antenatal assessment. So back to the app. So they can read them at their leisure. At the top here, we can manage the GP axis, as we said before. And even though we've only been live, fully live since May, but we've had in community, we've been live since December 19, I think we're just beginning to see some women return for their second pregnancy. So this option here lines up their previous pregnancy so they can see it all together in one view. They can edit their account, change their phone numbers and passwords and log out of the system here. So just back to our presentation again. This is what happens when we make an appointment within the Vaginet system. They can get an email reminder the notification appears on their phone, unlocked. When they go to open the app, they also get another notification. So all of these are contributing towards missing or not attending an appointment. And quite an exciting feature actually for us is if I select the type of appointment as near me, then we have the option, do you want this lady to enter her blood pressure and new analysis. Obviously, during the COVID pandemic, and especially at the height of the lockdown, we were supplied with home blood pressure monitoring kits, but we issued to the ladies. Very important for us to measure is the one measurement that we can't afford to have any space between is the blood pressure. Sort of silent symptoms with pregnancy induced hypertension. So really important for us to keep an eye on the blood pressure. And this is what the woman sees in her phone. It asks her to enter the systolic, the diastolic, and if appropriate, the urinalysis. Talks about the leaflets there. I also see this in the timeline. It notifies me that somebody, that she has actually read a leaflet. So one big advantage during COVID for us was the push notifications. So the facility is that we can send out a push notification for everybody that has signed up to the app and consented to push notifications. Now, obviously, during the COVID pandemic, the guidelines from the World College of Obstetrics and Gynecology were changing frequently, almost weekly. So you can see here that we sent out the link. This is the link to their web browser information for pregnant women during COVID. So it was a way of us keeping women up to date without providing a leaflet. But the other thing we could do, of course, the visit, visiting times were changing all the time in the hospital. It, we could send out push notification messages, for instance, here, attending for a scan at read more, accompanying visitor information. These, these are some of our biggest concerns during COVID, our biggest question from the patient. And just to end here, when we first started there, we, we actually thought that we would have quite a few women that might request paper copies. But in actual fact, for the last quarter, we can see we have between 97 and 100% in some care locations. These are women that have consented to the app and registered. So we're extremely pleased with this because it was such an effective way of communicating during this time when we can't always see our patients face to face. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. That was, that was really interesting. So I guess we'll uh, we can just put our webcams on now, ready for the, the question and answer session. So I think Jaya might want to take us through that. Okay. Karen, if you put your webcam on as well, I, I understand Karen kept her webcam off during the presentation just to make sure that she had a, a great connection. <gasps> So Karen, that's great. We'll put your webcam on now for the question time. Thanks. Okay, we've had 
three questions in so far, but we really would love to hear from the audience because that really does make a much better webinar. One of the first questions that has come in is, and you actually mentioned it, how has the app helped during COVID? And so I'll come to each of our speakers. Well, our biggest advantage was a push notifications you know, and the home blood pressure monitoring. So that did mean that we could limit our face-to-face -face consultations. But I have to say, during that time, women really miss seeing their midwife. It, you know, they really did. So in actual fact, near me helped because at least if they couldn't see, they could see a face. Whereas some of the telephone appointments, I do feel that they didn't, they, they need to see a face. They, you know, they're reassured by seeing their own midwife. Thanks, Karen. Dawn? Yeah, absolutely what Karen was saying. You know, it gives the person the ability to actually see their professional who they were seeing. You know, it gives added reassurance or assurance in any case. And also as well, especially in the social services sector, you know, they're, they're able to do any risk assessments for anyone, see their home environment if that's appropriate to see. So, you know, it's getting a feel for a you're making it more person-centred by seeing that person and getting that close connection, as Karen was saying. Thanks both. Next question in is, what are the opportunities on the horizon that you haven't realised yet? So what's next? For us, it's feedback. We really need to see if we are providing you know, a good service on um, what we can improve on. So I think for us, feedback will be our next step. I know that what's on the horizon with the app is inputting insulin, blood pressure measurements, uh, sorry, blood sugar measurements into the app. It's getting bigger and bigger. That's what I can say at the moment. Yeah, for us, it's feedback. For me, I would really like to see some feedback for the app. Thanks, Karen. Dawn? Yeah, I think there's been a lot of opportunities in the sense of, you know, you're able to bring family members into the calls or interpreters or power attorneys, whatever suitable. So it brings the opportunity to bring people together to discuss people's care plans or, you know, discuss treatments or anything like that. It's just another tool to be able to see patients or their users. And also another thing as well, some of the things that we've came to realise within using Near Me, and this was from the Quality and Diversity Impact Assessment, we do have information leaflets for the users and we've actually just gone through the process now of translating them into various languages as well. So, you know, everyone can have access to that leaflet too. Okay, thanks very much. Has an evaluation been done to calculate how much travel has been saved? near me yes yeah, so there has been after the survey it does ask how many miles have been saved if you were to travel i can find out exactly what that's sitting at, at the moment but we do that question is asked especially within some of the island boards as well they've done quite a lot of work in terms of how much travel and equates to money as well within that so i can certainly find that out and I will link in with the team. Thanks. Now you've actually implemented something like this but if you had to give some top tips to people who would like to implement something similar what have you learned along the way in terms of culture and change that you would share with people who might be planning something similar and that's to both our speakers. I think for me it would be a good scoping exercise to see what wi-fi Net, what your network is like in each area because that, that has held us back in some areas. Um, I know for vaginal maternity, for instance, we initially started with iPads in the community and uh, we had to switch very quickly to laptops because when you see how midwives work, the iPads were not going to work. They're very mobile and they're, you know, they, they need to attach to their own sort of Wi-Fi really sometimes if they can't get to GP surgeries which are closed at night and things so it, it was really for me the wi-fi scoping and also training you know doing we were quite short of staff during this time as well and it was really difficult to get people to come for training because of the pandemic and because of the areas for me training in basic IT skills would have been beneficial prior to implementing a, 
age unit maternity record. I do think they've done extremely well in grasping all the new technology because nobody goes in to be a midwife, you know, thinking I'll take a laptop and a desktop with me. That's really not on your horizon at all. You know, you're usually hands-on and very personal. You know, you're not a techie sort of type person. Thanks. Dom? Yeah, I, I, I would echo what Karen was saying and certainly having a connection and the equipment, you know, making sure that you do have a device or anything like that and also the equipment to do it. And also, you know, it is, as I was saying, it is just another tool that can be used, you know, in some circumstances, you know, doing a near me video call isn't appropriate or if it's hands on examination you know, you need to be there, you can't do near me. So yeah, I think that, yeah, some of the main challenges is connection and having the equipment to do so. Okay, now we've, I'm going to come to a member of our audience, Karen Thompson from Highlands Islands Enterprise. Hi. Fantastic to see how well received NHS near me has been, but there was a very small number of people who didn't want to use it again. Has this given pointers as to how the service could be improved even further? Yes, yeah, so from the survey results that we got that was in my slides, there was a small percentage who wouldn't like to use it again. So, you know, this could be, it's hard to actually pinpoint that from the survey, but, you know, it could be from anything that they, they just didn't like it. We have heard near me has been offered to families, however, they don't, they just do not want to use it and sometimes it could be down to what we were saying before it could be down to the connection you know if there was any issues with that and that's maybe just disencouraged them to use it again. Thanks Karen hopefully that's answered your question. Right over to the rest of our audience if you'd like us to take you off mute just now if you could click on your raised hand icon and even just to give us some feedback on what you've heard what what's your observations that sort of thing. So if you'd like us to take you off mute, click on that now. But before we do that, this is to both Dawn and Karen. What's the one thing that excites you still about this project? And I'll come to Karen first. I think my next, it's just improving all the time. I mean, Imagine It Maternity has two monthly updates and there's there's something like two and a half thousand change requests in to change it. So it's 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 changing all the time. It's, it's quite hard to keep up, keep up with sometimes, but I, I quite like that. You know, I mean, at the moment we're doing CTG recording. So that means that somebody in Cave Nair is having a CTG, that's a cardiotography, tracing of the baby's heartbeat on the machine. So that means somebody in Cave Nair is having a CTG. The clinician can view that in rig more. You know, I, I think that's great to be able to do that. And that should be available very soon within all the remote CMUs. So I'm quite excited about getting that on the go. Thanks, Karen. Dawn? Yeah, so certainly it's exciting to see that the numbers have increased to just over 19, I think it's just below 19,000 per week which is absolutely massive and it's always encouraging to hear some of the feedback that we get from both perspectives as well you know that it helped them in any way or you know reduced any stresses or anxieties but I think it comes back to hearing both the patient and the clinician or professional using it and seeing the, the benefits of it and seeing how actual easy it is to use near me as well which is really encouraging. Hey Dawn that was your answer in a professional capacity but you've actually been a user in a, in a personal capacity as well. I have, I have and I found the app absolutely fantastic during my pregnancy as well you know I could share some if I was in a different location for an appointment I could share, you know, what where I was measuring, except all that information. So I find, found it hugely beneficial. Thank you very much. It's great to hear both sides of the coin. Like, uh, thank you very much for your questions, audience. And I would like to pass back to Andrea. Thanks. Thanks, Jaya. And thanks to Dawn and, and Karen for such an inspiring insight into the technology 
implementation that you've undertaken and you're still undertaking and it will continue. And great to see that the adoption rate is so high, you know, that people are really engaging with, with the technology opportunities and, and hopefully making their lives easier as well. So I hope the numbers will continue to increase and, and the technology will be, you know, serving the patients and the professionals. So I just wanted to ask everyone in our audience to Take the opportunity after the webinar, straight afterwards, you'll get a, a window pop up that will ask you for feedback. So we would be really keen to hear from you and find out if there's other speakers maybe you would be uh, looking to see on here or just add anything else you want to tell us. And that just leads me then to wish you all a good Christmas break and encourage you to look out for our new Nexus webinars that will be announced in the new year. Okay. Thank you again to Don and Karen. Thanks everyone and have a good day. Bye-bye now.